Hey guys, it's been a while. Hopefully you guys have been doing well. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 5 boss meals that I recommend and play. There's some other ones but I'm talking about the ones I personally play and know. And the thing I'm talking about today are going to be one trino classes and won't be very hard to find. I won't be talking very deep into every class, I'll be just talking about like the key points and some examples. If you want like a more in-depth guide on the classes, um, let me know. But I'm just gonna go over quickly on each character. With that being said, let's get started. Also, these are in no particular order. Starting off, we have Crayon Eater, I mean Dawn Warrior. Like I mentioned, it only needs one Tri-Node. Solar Slash, Cosmic Shower, and Cosmic, Cosmic Burst. You don't really need the yellow scales because they're strong enough by themselves. So first things first, Dawn Warrior has three toggles. Rising Sun or Falling Moon. Also, you can right click on Rising Moon to switch the stance. When I have either one of these on, it will alternate. If I right click it, I'm in this stance. Then, if you have to lock on it, it'll be a regular standing position. That's a preference thing. The other toggle is Soul Element, and the last toggle is Equinox Cycle. Dawn Warrior has a really strong debuff called True Sight. It gives the enemy minus 10% IAD and it gives you 5% FD and that's for the whole party. Dawn Warrior has his own bind called Impaling Rays. The Equinox Slash is like a pseudo TP so you can like press it and go through things. It can also go through Lotus Lasers which I'll show you. So I find it easier if I jump than do it. Yeah, you can go through those lasers. And I do it again. And technically it has 4 iframes. I say technically because it depends on when you pop them. Look at your Blazing Assault. There's an iframe that lasts 1.8 seconds. And you can actually use it again. And it'll be another 1.8 seconds. So it goes like this. You can use it again. See the bar tick on the top right. That's two iframes right there with your hyper. The other hyper is called Soul Eclipse. So you get this in fifth job. It's an iframe when you pop it and it'll change your background. You see this one in the background. And it's also an iframe when you pop it again to explode it. It is part of your burst though, so you don't really want to waste it, but in a pinch, you know, that's two free iframes. Technically, your hyper is only 45 seconds cooldown. I have all my nodes max, but really, you don't need to max it out to be like that strong. Don't worry, it's great mobber. I mean, I saw clips to kind of sit there for about a minute. But if not, pop your shower for says summon then like for example I would like that's my order shower over here you kind of left right occasionally you would do like a small FMA other thing to note is your cosmic shower you see the numbers tick on it the higher the number the longer it lasts Shredding is really easy if, if you want to be lazy. Great part is pressing Soul Eclipse. It constantly takes the whole time you, you're in the Soul Eclipse. So you can stay in here for 40 seconds or something. So it's very lazy farmer too if you really want to farm on it. So to recap, it has a strong debuff. It has its own bind. It has a pseudo TP. It has technically 4 iframes. It's great at mobbing. It's great at bossing. It only needs one try node. And here are the cons. Next up, we have Buck. So the try nodes are Sea Serpent's Rage and Sea Serpent's Purse, along with Octopunch. 
This one you do need to run it a little bit more because you want to one shot with Lord of the Deep, which is your swirling dragon skill. If you cannot much on mobs, or if it hits too many mobs, it will just turn off within this time frame. So one toggle you have is Sea Serpent. Make sure it's on. You may have seen Bucks do this. So how you do that is you, you press your advanced dash and your jump button at the same time. But kind of press the advanced dash first and then jump, if that makes sense. It sounds kind of weird, but you'll get the hang of it. So instead of pressing like, let's say, D, D is advanced dash and F is jump. You want to press D and F at the same time, but D slightly first, then your F skill. It takes some practice. The so training is really fun on, on a buck. You can train out really big maps. The momming is fun. Since you are a pirate, you have access to loaded dice. So you could be even. You could be getting even more EXP upon training. Just make sure you press load dice skill and press number 6 for the EXP. And you're good to go. But Buck also technically has 4 iframes. You have a skill in 5th job called Lightning Form. So press this skill, puts you in like this kind of little like static form. And then you throw out one ball. That's an iframe. Those the other two. In burst, you can't throw all three at once. But you can also time it if you want to. Another thing to note is, in landing form, you, you can double tap left or right, and you'll like TP. It's not really a TP, it's more like a long dash. But just be aware of that. And your fourth iframe is your Howling Fist, which it's a two tap activation. So you tap it once to activate it, then the second time you press it and your screen flashes, that's the iframe. Pretty cool, huh? Also, a Buck's pretty tanky with this defensive stance. Like a shield. Also, you have access to real speedy fusion, so you have plus 2 attack speed instead of plus 1. And of course, time leap, which gives some skills for you and your teammates. Main boss's skill is your Octopunch. Punch. You can use Serpent Vortex, Dash, or stay still. Like a dash diagonally. Also works for downwards and left to right. There is a couple stacks, so make sure you watch it carefully. They did go up quite quickly, but make sure you don't spam it. Up and vortex can actually go through with Lotus Lasers too. I mean, it's kind of tight though. It is possible though, but yeah. Also, I'll show you the um, tiny form. It's an iframe. So you tap it, an iframe. Tap it again, an iframe. Tap it one more time, an iframe. Then the Howling Fist too. Once the mouse closes or you press it again, the knife frame. This four right there. So the pros are it's very easy to play. It's pretty fun to play. Pretty fun to play once you get used to the super jump. It has four iframes and it's decently strong. Also has a cool looking class. The only con I would say is you have to find it like a little bit more than usual. Just because you want your both the deep to one shot as your Super jumping around. If you cannot much have a lot of deep on, you want to use your hook bomb as your super jumping to help you know kill the mobs. Next up, we have Win Archer. So for Win Archer, it's actually pretty easy to play. 
not the most fun in my opinion, but it's, it's easy. Not so flashy. And being an archer, it is a two minute class. All the skills are very, very low cooldown. As we're not sure, you have two toggles. You have your traveling wind. And your storm elemental. You do get this thing called the emerald flower. So it's basically like a dummy. Later on, you get some passives. So this emerald dust. It gives the boss minus 10% IED. You have another skill called Pinpoint Pierce, which adds another minus 15% IED to the boss. In fifth job, you get a skill called Howling Gale. It has up to three stacks. You can summon one by pressing just the button. Right now you see there's, there's a number two on it. So it has two stacks on it. You can summon two tornadoes by holding down the down button and pressing the Howling Gale button. You couldn't see it because they were stacked together. And you can summon all three if you hold up and then press the Howling Gale button. Normally I pop all three when I'm bursting and then I just press one whenever I get a stack. Another skill is Merciless Winds. Also, fifth job. It's very low cooldown. I just press it whenever it's up. Unfortunately, Wind Usher does not have an iframe. It has a super busted shield called Gale Barrier. I don't exactly know how this works, but basically, you can take a lot of damage. <laughs> That's all I gotta know. And let me show you. So, I'm gonna go and Lotus and then pop the Gale Barrier. So, I tank three laser ticks with Gale Barrier. And there were fast ticks too. That's not normally what would happen. So you know you could take like a couple hits. I think it's pretty simple. I mostly use Vortex Fear. And it's 30 second cooldown and it backs enemies towards it. And then you can just do this. Your Sock of Heaven. And you can put out your like natos whenever it's up, along with merciless winds. So your toggles will set out homing arrows to nearby enemies. And then you can text in your vortex spear again and repeat. It's very very easy to train. Something to know is your Howling Gale actually has a toggle. So without the lock, it'll slow down as soon as it touches an enemy, which you want for bossing. If you are training, you want to right click it, and there'll be a, a lock icon. That means the that means the tornadoes are gonna move very fast no matter how many enemies you touch. Here's an example. It's always moving fast. Which you want, so it kills mobs faster. So lock on for training, lock off for bossing. Also, this Emma Flower does slow down enemies. There's nothing really cool I can show you, but I'll show you in Damien P2 specifically. So we're in P2, and the Emerald Flower can actually slow down the blue balls very slowly, as you can see. Yeah, it's still very slow. Yeah, so the try notes. It's a weird setup. Um, I'm not really sure how it really works. It's a three try note. But monsoon, you don't really care too much about. But trifling win, Starbreaker, and Song of Heaven is your main skills. And then Fairy Spiral, you kind of use it for mobbing. 
if you want to like jump and hit things. Yeah, that's basically the four skills you need. Traveling Wind, Stormbringer, Song of Heaven, and Fairy Spyro. Also, it's pretty good for FMA, like this skill. Good for mobbing, I guess. So the pro is... You have a lot of IED from the Emerald Flower and Pitpoint Pierce. Easy to play. It is a 2 minute class. And the Emerald Flower is just really busted for slowing down enemies or the Blue Ball and Damien. And the training is pretty chill. I will say the con is... It's very simple to play. Which is good or bad thing. And it's not really that flashy. Like there's not really like that cool skills it has. But it's an easy and simple boss meal. And it is kind of weak, I'm not gonna lie. So you do need to find it like a little bit more. Like more than a buck. But anyways, it's a good class, I like it. Next up, we have Hero. So for heroes, all we really need is Final Attack, Raging Blow, and Cry Valhalla. There are other skills, but they're very strong on their own. Heroes, you have two toggles and one skill you want to always keep up. The very point one is Combo Attack, which grants you like, your five orbs around you. There are five blue orbs and then turn to five purple orbs. It just final damage. And your other toggle is Enrage. So this is for bossing. You hit less enemies, but you do more damage. If you're mobbing, make sure it's off. And your other skill is called Scarring Sword, which gives you attack when you hit enemies. So Hero is a 2 minute class, and it's pretty strong. Nothing really to be said about this class, really. You kind of just like line up your burst buttons, and then you go to town. Pop all my buffs, and then I'm just holding down my Raging Blow. You're bossing. There's another debuff you want to use, which is called Puncture. As far as bombing goes, you really want to, want to use Puncture because it hits like pretty vertically. There's another skill called Flash Blade. So you can actually like direct this wherever you want to. So if you, you press it by itself, it hits a beam in front of you. It has, it has a short cooldown too. You can also aim it upwards. Or diagonally up, left or up right. Another cool skill or gap closer is called Flash Blade. So this kind of like dash you towards the nearest enemy. Probably like that. Also has short cooldown. Also something really random is... Your up drop is your upwards charge. But when you're in the air, you can press down and your attack button. And you're like... Go fast downwards. I have used it in Lotus several times though. So when Lotus is pushing, I just go up. And after the push, I go downwards to the plats or something. Just, just some side notes. Okay, so the pro is... Hero only has one try node. Very strong. Very easy to play. Almost brain dead. Con is, it's too simple for me. I, I'm not really, I don't really like the one button gameplay. But I made it because I wanted an easy boss meal. Uh, another con is, I don't like the mobbing. I don't think it's that great. It's not really my style, but it's gotten better. But it is very strong though. And the last one I'm talking about today is Demon Slayer. All you need is Demon Impact. Rubber Chomp and Demon Lash. So Demon Slayer has three iframes. So you want to always have blue blood on because it just gives you more lines, more damage, you know. 
Your first item is your Dark Metamorphosis, which is a buff too. But be careful because it does tick enemies around you, or you know, it can break boxes if you're nearby. When you, when you press it, it's an iframe. Your other iframe is called Ravenstorm, which is a 30 second cooldown. Also, this heals you a little bit. And your next iframe is actually your this drop skill called Demon Bane. It's a key down. So it's a key down up to 6 seconds. You're an iframe the whole time you're holding it down and a bit afterwards. So Demon Slayer is actually a 2 minute class. It does have quite a bit of buffs though. A lot of buttons. You may have heard about Demon Slayer mobbing. So it's just your Chaos Lock and Infernal Concussion. The Chaos Lock teleports you to the nearest enemy. And Infernal Concussion just something you press. Very easy training. If you have a Demon Force, you can use Cerberus Chomp to get some Demon Force back. Demon Slayer, along with other classes, really benefits from Green Pot. But Demon Slayer gets really busted with Green Pot. Something I really like about Demon Slayer is your dash is pretty instant. So your rush skill is called your Dark Thrust. Pretty much the moment you press it, it, it goes exactly forward. There's like no delay or no animation lock. Demon Slide does have a glide called Dark Winds. But if you don't like the glide like I do, you can right click it and you just have the normal like jump. So your main bossing skill is Demon Awakening in your fifth job. So when you're bossing, you want to have Demon Awakening. And then you want to use your auto attack. So for a minute you have you want to just auto attack. I'm not bossing right now, but uh I, I can't boss and talk. Very simple. Actually I'm I'm gonna go back a little bit. So in fourth job you have, you have a skill called Balance Rage. With this skill, you will not use any demon force. So before you do any buffs, because everything costs, you know, even force, I'm gonna pop this first. Then you know you can pop like whatever skills you want. But since my demon awakening did expire, that's when you start using your demon lash. And that costs your cast demon force. I casted this to show you. The demon lash does cause demon force. But if you're ever low, just use your Surplus Chomp. So yeah, the pearl is... Training is really easy. The bossing is pretty easy. There's just a lot of buttons and setup first. There's a lot of bossing and setup. Like for me, I have it like all in a row. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have it like all in a row. I just go down the line. Very straightforward. And then you summon your snake and then, you know, whatever. It has three iframes, one of them being like a 30 second cooldown and heals you. And it has its own bind too. It's called Binding Darkness. And actually as a Demon Slayer, you don't really need much IED or crit rate. Because a bunch of your skills gives you that stuff. Your Demon Cry gives minus 50% IED on the boss. Also increases drop rate by 20%, but good for breaking the box too. If you are not breaking the box, Make sure you turn off your blue blood, so you, you do less lines. Your demon impact always crits, and it gets minus 30% IED. Your leech aura heals you and your party mates if you attack. Your demon awakening gives you 50% IED and 50% boss. The demon bane gives you 50% crit rate and 30% IED. That's your um, after man burst. And your snake, it always crits and it gives you 50% gives you IED. 
But yeah, you really don't need that much to find this character. The only con I would say is... I'm not sure how this video is going to turn out, or how I'm going to edit, edit this video. But hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. And I'll see you in the next one. Let me know if you agree with my list, or if, I'm, if I miss anything. Let me know what you recommend as a boss meal, and what you play. Make sure you like if you like it, dislike if you dislike it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.